All right, so we're going to save the seeds from the Buccalochia. These are a very, very hot pepper. And the reason why I'm making this video is because a lot of people misunderstand saving seeds from, say, a pepper like this, which is the giant Marconi. And I'll cut this open right now. A lot of people misunderstand saving seeds from this, which has this type of core in the middle. And they think saving seeds from this is as easy as saving seeds from this. And they're completely different. Com a, a totally different world of saving seeds when it comes to these type of peppers. So with these type of peppers, you have to cut them open a certain way. You have to wear gloves. Like in general, when I'm saving seeds for peppers like this, yeah, you're going to get a little capsaicin on your hands and it's not that bad. And a lot of times I do get it in my eyes and I get it on my face. I'm burning constantly. I'm, I'm always being burned by peppers one way or another. But when you're saving seeds to Jalokias or Reapers like this one or the Nagala, these are very, very hot peppers. These are million plus BTU peppers. Most of the time you can cut these open and you'll get a pretty decent core. But the problem with these peppers are now this is a big one. This one's a little easier to actually get into. But when you get into these smaller ones, or see the inside of this thing. You can see how the seeds are. Okay. They're not very many, and they're spread all the way down. Now, watch what happens when I go to get these seeds off. Like, you got to pick them one at a time to get them off of here. But you can see I'm having a hard time getting these seeds off of here. And that's because the inside of this thing gets very ripe like a peach. It gets very soft. And this one's actually coming out pretty good. But you can see it's pulling a lot of the mass with it. A lot of times what I end up doing is having to rinse these. I've heard people ferment these. I don't know if that's exactly a good idea for peppers, but you can see how soft this is. It's like already a gel. I mean, it's very hard to get the seeds off of these peppers. The material gets all over your hands. I can smell this thing from here. I can smell this pepper from here. And this capsaicin gets all over your hands, and it sinks into your skin, and you get what's known as Hunan's hands. And what it is is your hands will burn, and they burn so bad that it becomes painful. Once that capsaicin gets all the way down near the bone, and it gets down to the, to the nerves, and it's hitting the nerves, it's like a toothache in your hands. It's not just a burn anymore. It gets so painful, it's almost undescribable. I've had it already and I, I almost went to the hospital because of it because I didn't know what was going on and it kept relapsing over and over and over and this went on for about a week to two weeks. Very painful experience and you don't know it until you it happens to you. So I, you have to wear gloves with this. But the reason why I brought that up is because one of the reasons why I got Hunan's hands is because you could see the trouble I have to go through to get these seeds off of here. It's just very oily on the inside of this pepper. It's very wet and soft and very oily. Now, I'm not going to do all these peppers in front of you, but this is a very time-consuming... This is one pepper. I'm still here on this one pepper, and I still got to open up another ventricle in here. You can see there's more seeds in here. And... When you start getting into other peppers like Reapers, I'll show you one of those in just a second. Because I got to get all these cleaned up. 
and put out and dry. Now I sun dry these for the most part. I get them down to the point where they curl up and then I bring them in at night. I put them in a, in a bowl. I keep it in the refrigerator and then I take them back out in the next Sunday. So it takes about two to three days. It'll be almost completely dry and then I can powder this up and it makes a super hot powder. Let me tell you, this is one of the hottest powders you're ever going <laughs> to want to put on any of your cooking. Now, let me show you a reaper. Also too, when you're saving these seeds, just so you know, you want to make sure that you label your seeds, you know, you label your dish. And when you, when you label your dish, you want to take your, your sticky uh, thing like this and put it, make sure it's like this. So you can reuse these plates year in and year out. You can get a couple of years of seasons out of it, so you don't have to keep buying paper plates. Or you, I prefer paper plates too, by the way, as opposed to styrofoam or plastic, because the paper, it just, air kind of can flow through it from underneath. I just like it better. Whereas the plastic, I'm not, I don't know if I like that. Paper is what I prefer. So you want to put your tape on it like this. And then that way at the end of the year, you could take it off. You could even save your tape at the end of the year. You could create like a two by four and just take all your tape and stick it on your two by four. And you could even reuse that if you want to. So everything's reusable. It, when you're growing a lot of peppers, you're going to want to kind of think in those terms. Let me just show you like with the Reaper, for example. Okay. I want to mix these up because I got several hot peppers I'm doing this with. So, like with the Reapers, let me grab a different one. I want to make sure my point is valid. Now, with these Reapers, a lot of the times, now these are usually really difficult. You usually don't get very many seeds out of a Reaper. Oh, that smells like a reaper. Let me tell you, if you've never eaten a reaper before, if you eat them fresh, they're not, they taste like habanero or any of that fruity things. But when you eat these dried like a powder, it's the best tasting powder you can get. It's very hot, yes. But as far as taste, you can't beat the taste of this. This pepper is definitely worth the burn. But usually, the reason why I'm showing you this is usually there's not a lot of peppers. I mean, there's usually not a lot of seeds in the pepper, and getting seeds out of it is very important, so you have to get every seed, and that means you have to, a lot of times, you fish around inside of there looking for each one of those seeds. There's really no easy way to do this. You're going to have to harvest each seed at a time. Sometimes you get lucky, you can kind of pinch them off like that in a cluster, but a lot of times you're going to have to pull each seed off of that placenta and if you're doing this without gloves and I'm going to tell you something about the gloves right now these gloves right here are actually inappropriate for what I'm doing you actually need to get the black nitro gloves because that will actually prevent the oil from seeping in after a certain period of time once you get through about a dozen peppers with these gloves you're going to get burned anyway in fact these will rip after a while because the oil just breaks it down so but some of these seeds are no good. I can see there's black on them and stuff like that. So I'm not going to pick every one off. But you can see how I have to kind of pick each seed off of this thing to get the seeds out of it. And again, I'm going to make a powder out of this. I'm going to take these. I'm going to dry these out in the sun. And I'm going to get them to a dry enough state. Yeah, you could put these in a dehydrator if you want. That's fine. I've done that already. I like to use my natural resources and conserve on energy as much as possible. It lowers my carbon footprint and I get a nice product in the end that I made and grew myself. But the reapers, a lot of times, these peppers, you really have a hard time. The riper these peppers are, the more difficult it becomes getting the seeds out. And that's kind of a catch-22 thing because they got to... For these pepper seeds to be any viability to them at all, especially reapers and buccalochias and those kind of peppers, these peppers really have to be at the ripest state. You really don't want to collect seed from anything other than the pepper is so ripe when you, when you squeeze that pepper, 
it mushes in your hands. It becomes like, it instantly becomes like a, uh, a sauce almost. It just turns to mush. And that's really the state you want to harvest these peppers at. I can feel my fingers already heating up a little bit already from this. But that's how you're going to want to save your seeds from your buccalochias and your, your reapers and stuff. And you really got to do it like this. If you start opening them up and you don't have gloves on and you say, oh, I'm just going to grab a couple seeds out. You're going to find that you're going to be mushing your fingers around in and around that placenta. And then what's going to end up happening is you're going to get some of that in your eye or you're going to touch yourself when you go to the bathroom, you know, when you handle yourself going to the bathroom. I'm going to guarantee you're going to be one very sorry individual. And I'll tell you that right now because it happens to the best of us. Even now with these gloves on, like I told you, I'm still, my fingertips are, I'm feeling them warm up a little bit. I f actually feel it right through the glove. I mean, like I say, these aren't really the appropriate gloves to do this with. If you do get gloves, you really want to buy the black nitro ones. They don't break down or allow anything to pass through for a certain period of time. These kind of pass through almost instantly. That capsaicin oil goes right through the gloves. It does help, and when I'm done, I'm going to wash with soap and water, but it's not a cure-all to the problem. The video was mainly supposed to be about me showing you how to save seeds from these super hot peppers, but I'm also kind of giving you a little warning so when you do start to save seeds, some of the things you may experience are uh, Hunan's hands. And when you get Hunan's hands, you're going you're gonna to know the reason why these seeds might cost $10 for 10 seeds, for example. You're going to understand that reason. You're going to have a little bit more respect for that price. And it's not because people are price gouging you. It's because the intensity of getting these seeds off of this pepper and then into your package to sell it to you. And you have to go through these gloves a lot. Even if they're not dirty or anything, after a while, you got to peel these gloves off. Because eventually that capsaicin just starts sinking in your hands. Your hands will start burning even with these on. So it does help, but you're still going to have to wash your hands. Now keep in mind, once a capsaicin sinks into your skin, the epidermis and everything of your skin, the more you wash your hands, that's when the heating really takes effect. That's when the pain is really going to begin because the water... Like when you go swimming, your hands get all pruney and wrinkly. Well, that effect happens when you're washing your hands. Your skin, it, it just becomes sort of pruney and wrinkly. It's absorbing the water, but it's drawing that capsaicin into your skin. It draws it very deep into your skin and into the nervous system, the bones, and that's where the pain is going to begin. Remember, it's not just your hands burning. It's going to be like a toothache in your bones. Your, your whole hands are going to literally ache like a toothache it's very very painful there's nothing they can give you that's going to get rid of it you're just going to have to wait it out for two or three days and this pain can literally last for two or three days and every time you wash your hands or you're working around water the pain comes right back you, the whole process begins again so it's like you're terrified to even wash your hands that's how bad it can get so make sure you wear gloves buy the best gloves you can when you're dealing with these peppers the final thing I want to mention about saving these seeds to these peppers is that a lot of times, as you can see on here, there's a little bit of material on them. So you're really not supposed to ferment pepper seeds, but what you end up having to do is rinse them. And then you put them in a colander and you just kind of move your hand around there and scrape it against the screen. And that usually gets the seeds clean enough to where you can package them and sell them. What you got to keep in mind is as soon as I use water, for some reason this chemical, this capsaicin chemical, really works hand in hand with water. It, it get, it, the water allows it to become penetrable to your skin. It helps penetrate your skin. It also allows this chemical to become like a gas, like pepper spray. And so what happens is, is once you get enough of these seeds and you go to put them in a strainer to clean them up and get, you know, the rest of that. And you want to do this if you do decide that you're going to want to clean them and get them ready for sale. And you're going to want to put them in a screen colander and clean them up like that. If you decide that you want to do that, you want to do them while the thing is still fresh and this pepper is like soft. It comes off real easy and you don't have to do very much of it. What I can tell you is that once you start adding water to this, it releases a gas, and it's like getting hit in the face with pepper spray. It can be that bad. I literally was 
choking one time. I did a whole pile, had a whole pile of seeds for scorpions. And I had all that material. I went to go clean it out. And I got it under the sink and, sink and I'm cleaning and I'm cleaning. I'm scrubbing. Next thing I know, it, it hit me all at once. I started coughing and choking and sneezing. My eyes started burning and everything. It was like it released a gas. So keep that in mind when you're working with these. You're going to get hit with that spray. And if you do decide to use the colander method, I would recommend putting on a gas mask or a face, uh, some kind of a face mask because it will release the gas once you go to clean these seeds. Because you can't really sell seeds like that to people who are, you know, paying you 5 or $10 for the seeds. You can't, you have to clean them, and that means you got to get gassed. And so you're going to have to put a respirator on. you got to use a respirator when you're washing these seeds. If you don't believe me and you think I'm kidding you and you grow reapers, grab a reaper, get the seeds out of it, put it in a colander, and start cleaning the seeds and see what happens to you. Okay, I've been doing this for a long time. I can personally tell you I've been gassed several times. Always thinking it's like an onion. You always cut up an, on, an onion. You're always like, oh, I'm not going to cry this time. I'll just hold my head back. It gets you every time. Well, this is even worse than an onion. Even if you stand all the way back, that stuff aerosolizes, and it just fills up that whole area. The more water you add to this thing, the more gas it makes. And it just it's like getting hit with a very strong pepper spray. I guarantee you'll be sneezing like 150 times before you finally get out of there. I mean, you sneeze nonstop. It's incredible. It's very, very powerful gas that it releases. So that's just my recommendation to you if you're going to start doing these peppers and you're going to start getting involved with saving seeds to very hot peppers. And you should really apply this to really any of your hot peppers. You're going to want to kind of use that same method. I built up a sort of a pain tolerance where I can deal with a certain amount of pain where like doing fatalis and you know jalapenos and habaneros I can almost do those on a regular basis without gloves and I'm doing a real lot of them now I'm going to wear gloves but if I'm going to do like a dozen uh, at a time I don't even wear gloves I almost don't even have to wash my hands off right away and not worry about it though you do because your hands are slimy there's a certain level of pain that you learn to deal with and i've already learned to deal with that much but when it comes to these peppers you really want to make sure that you keep your hands covered and you wash your hands and you take every precaution because once that capsaicin sinks into your skin you can't change it you're stuck you're going to have to deal with that pain and believe me when I tell you, my hands are burning right now. They're warm at the fingertips, even with the gloves on. And I have to get all these done, so I'm going to have to deal with whatever comes now. So just remember, if you get the capsaicin on your hands, wash your hands right away. No matter what you do, that oil is going to immediately sink into your skin. There's a name for that when something sinks through your skin quickly. I forgot what that terminology is called, but... It will sink into your skin, believe me. It's going through my hands right now. So, Anyway, that's how I save seeds to my boot Yeah, I'll do one more for you on the... Uh, we'll do one of the Reapers. Here's another Reaper. And this is the best way to actually eat your Reapers, by the way. In my opinion, is to just dry them out. You're eating these things fresh. They're really harsh on your stomach and... It, the flavor is totally different when you dry these things out. They really are. They're so much better. So, if you look at it, you can see over here, see the oil on it? That's all the oil. It smells gorgeous. It's It's a, got a gorgeous smell. There's one thing about the Reapers. I fell in love with the Reapers uh, ever since I started growing them with the taste. I, it's really a pepper that I've grown accustomed to liking. So what I'm doing now is I'm just, it, you're going to see there's material on it. I'm going to end up rinsing these guys up. There's no really avoiding it. You just got to get them out of this. The last thing you want to do is start making this stuff really soft, the shell, because as you're handling it and manhandling it, the, the shell actually starts getting really soft. And then it's a real problem because now you release more of that oil is, than you really you don't need to get all that extra oil out of there. Just the minimal amount of handling is the name of the game. So get it out of here first. You're going to end up rinsing your seeds anyway. 
all right? See, like I'm having a hard time getting some of these upper seeds. And I really got to save every seed on this because you can see this one pepper it really didn't produce a lot of seeds. So, I mean, I'm really not getting many seeds for the amount of pepper, you know, size of that pepper. So that's why you're going to pay a lot more for Carolina Reapers. You're going to pay a lot more for those than you would pay for, say, a Fatale or or a bell pepper or something like that because look what you got to go through to get these seeds out of here. So you got to understand why these seeds cost so much money. It's not as simple as just picking seeds out of a bell pepper and you're done. I have to process this, several processes to get these seeds before they're actually packaged. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you're going to save seeds, remember, wear your gloves, wash your hands immediately after you're done. Don't keep your hands exposed to the capsaicin any longer than you have to. And then, you know, do it your best you can. I'm still probably going to get Hunan's hands anyway, even with the gloves and everything, because I'm processing so many peppers that I'm going to end up experiencing that anyway. But anyway, that was just a quick video on saving seeds to hot peppers, some of the do's and don'ts, and some of the other effects you might experience when you start saving seeds to these type of peppers. All right, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.